All right, here's the follow-up from my last video. Um, if you don't know me, I'm God of Gold, so let's get on with it. Now, about the characters in Hearts of Iron. Each character has their own purpose, their own country, um, their own traits, and, of course, ideology. What I mean by that is sub-ideology, because in Vanilla, there's only four pieces here. That is seen. Um, democratic, fascism, communism, and neutrality. Now, neutrality can range anywhere between anarchism to just flat-out authoritarian. <laughs> Each country has its own um, modifiers. Uh, sometimes you can add them in, you know, via modding. But other times, in vanilla, it has its own modifiers there as well. Now, there's also a lot of triggers that come with it. Uh, sometimes you can you know, do a focus, which could also do that. So yeah, um, let's get to it. Now, I'm going to use anarchism as an example again, only because it seems to be very uh, helpful. Now, before we continue, I just want to say that, um, well, obviously, if you want to know about this mod more, I would say um, the link is uh, for the workshop is in the description down below. Now, I did uh, cancel the Discord server for it, only because it's very difficult. But basically, um, if you do need help or something, or if there's any issues, you can uh, respond there in one of the discussion topics. Or you can just leave a comment out there. So just want to bring that up. Now, let's get to this. Now, for common, which is this is where the characters are. Granted, you could do, like, the old style of what they did in Toy 4. Like, you can go into history, and you could put, like, create leader, blah, 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 here. Although, this actually tends to keep it clean. Granted, it's more tedious to formulate or to program, but once it's there, you're all set. Hell, even if you have, like, a temporary portrait for this... It still should be able to show up so long as it's a dot dds which is a another category in itself and if you're curious about that very quickly now i'm not making this video about you know portrait making but it does tie into it so i'm going to show you very quickly so you go into gfx or whatever hub like this is the mod of mod hub of your mod there's a lot of files here but some of them like you know to be announced or developed, whatever, like that's still, you know, each file has its own purpose. The git ignore is just another thing, don't worry about that. But these files up here are very important. So yeah. Um, so here's how this works. If you are curious to find a leader portrait, you simply go into GFX, leaders, and you select your tag. Now you can use uh, let's say a leader unknown or I don't know you can pretty much use whatever just so long as the pathing for this is correct like for example uh, it has to be something like all caps gfx underscore and then this id something kind of like that I know it's a little bit of a issue so you know what I'll explain this a little deeper but other than that it's so also this is a dot gfx file dot gui is the gui basically it's the um graphical user interface which usually involves in the bars the buttons the detail on certain things stuff like that now here's a good example uh anastasi vasnatsky this is a, that is the ID as to where the portrait is. And as you can see here, GFX leaders tag, which in this case is Russ. And then you do portrait Russ Anastasia. Yeah. And then you can leave this all capital, but keep in mind, if you do not have this pathing and you do not put it in this format, it won't work. This path will fail. But how this works is relatively simple so say if you're creating a new leader and you let's say you just want to use this just 
an example. Uh, what you can do is, oh, I opened that in the wrong format. So back to the AFA uh, tag again. Now you could see here, there's a lot going on. So I will explain it as much as I can. Now, this is the character ID and this is the name. Now you can have these two the same thing, but you need to localize anything that's underscored. Now you can do this, but you cannot do it for up here. This is the ID. This is very important. If you, for example, if you do this, this character will not work. Or even if it did, it probably would cause so many errors, it probably wouldn't even show up. So that's, this is important. The name is also important, but if you do it just like this, you don't have to localize it, which is very handy. But if you really want to do it, you could put something like this. Um, sorry. You could put that. You could put underscore name. Um, pretty much like the options are limitless for that. But just so you know that if it's not localized and you use this ID, guess what will happen? Underscore will show up making it look ugly, something you don't want, okay? So, now for the portraits. Now, I mentioned to you prior that um, you have the big and you have the small. Now, there are ways of deciphering it. Like, you can do this. Like, you could put small and you could put large at this one. Depending on where you stand, depending on what, like, if you want to make this as a minister, which that means you would need to create a new sprite for this. Uh, depending on it. And you also have to make sure it's available, which I have seen happen before, uh, especially in like No Step Back, uh, which is a Soviet update from like two years ago. Um, if certain characters are purged from the Soviet Union, they won't appear. That's just a quick little heads up for you. Um, so if you see that, if you see something like available, and if you're trying to create a new character, don't worry about it. Just... All I would say is, you know, if you want to try to bypass it, I would say approach with caution and delete it. But keep in mind, if it's not, um, if you don't have the available thing, that might also affect the dynamics of the gameplay, which is in its own nature in itself. So it's always best to be on your guard. Now, aside from the portraits, obviously you have this. Now, if this looks familiar, you'll notice a GFX thing on it. And as you see here, it's kind of like this. So you can actually put this in here. You don't need quotations for this. That is, unless if you are pathing it kind of like this, which you can also do. It's very flexible. All you have to do is uh, you can copy this and do this. But that's the more easier way to do it. Um, keep in mind, this requires quotation. This doesn't. All you need is the ID for it. You need to make sure you have it documented in your mod, in the interface. How that, that works, obviously, you go to the main hub of your mod, make an interface file, make a GFX file, and just organize it. Just put it in here. Make sure the pathing is right, and it should come up. Now, sometimes the leader won't come up, mainly because either one of two things. You forgot to script something, you put it in the wrong pathing, or you just simply don't have the portrait or icon piece that comes with it, like the minister or something. That usually is the result of a blank um, thing, blank character. But once you have that, you're all set. Um, so obviously, a uh, quick rundown. So you have expire, which means uh, the character will expire by this date or around that date and time, meaning... Once that date strikes, this character would no longer exist. It would basically die, but it wouldn't, like, outwards announce it. Unless, of course, if you script an event in, but that depends. Um, ideology, despotism. Now, obviously, that is a sub-ideology for neutrality. Now, if you're confused, no worries. So... These are the custom ideologies I did. These is, this is how I sort ideologies. I don't like to put it in all one file. That is very confusing and it's very clunky because you have to scroll through lines and lines of coding. It's very annoying. 
Not to mention, even Control F, even though that does help, it's just, it's tedious. I would always, always do it like this. And it still works, by the way, in case you're wondering. So if you want to do it like this, do not worry. You'll be fine. Just make sure all the basic uh, credentials and peripherals are set. Now, obviously, you saw like uh, despotism. Now, unfortunately, because this is AMR or my anarchist mod, despotism lies under the monarchism ideology because in vanilla game that that's where it would be because here's an example. If I go into the common vanilla file, which is here, and this is exactly why I don't, I don't, I do not like to put these in all one, but as you can see right here, neutrality has despotism and that since if this was vanilla game and you didn't change the ideology uh, or sub ideologies around, that's the ideology he will fall under. Also, this is a very important warning. The one thing you should never, ever do when it comes to setting up a leader. Now, it's okay if you want to create a new ID called neutrality underscore ideology, but you should never do this. Never put the main ideology for him. That will cause uh, very unstable effects to the character. He may not even show up. Or maybe the party could be off. It's not going to be good. So I would always say stick to the types, not the main. Okay. Um, also, while I'm here, I would like to briefly, briefly mention. Can be randomly selected. No. Meaning that if a leader dies and a generic leader takes its place, this leader by default will not show up. This would be a special ideology. Now, obviously, there's different groups, you know, in the neutrality uh, mechanism, but usually they would follow a similar pattern of like the other ideologies, like uh, fascism. Obviously, you have Nazism, the fascism ideology, like I mentioned earlier, you could do this, but never, ever use this, use this. So types you can use for the characters themselves, not the ideological tag or ID for the character itself, because that will be a disaster. So don't do this, do this. Okay. Now, if you wanted to, you could actually copy this and create a fascist leader, or depending on where he stands, he could have Nazism, he could have Rexism. And he could have anything else that you put in this category of the ideology. Now, like I said, to add a type, all you would do is this. Then you just rename the ID to, let's say, chauvinism, which is basically a superiority over someone else. Now, to be safe, I'm not going to save over that, but basically that is how it works. Sub ideologies go here. But you can't just say sub ideology and that. It has to be the way it is. So, yeah, um, it goes by that thing. Obviously, this is the traits. Uh, traits can be found in country leaders of common. So, you go to common, country leader, you open this, and here you go. You have a list of traits that you can use, and they are localized under the localization category. Now, it might take a little bit of searching, and if you create a new uh, leader trait yourself, you would also have to script it like that too. But if you organize them in different files, like say, for example, you have your mod name, um, and you have traits underscore L underscore English, which in case if um, you don't know, that's for the language of it. Now, there are different languages, but I'm not going to get into that for now. So, um, obviously, expire. I went over that. Uh, the ID doesn't really matter unless if you really want to add one. But keep in mind, if you are to add a new ID, it has to be unique. Or at least I would recommend it to be unique. Because you could risk replacing something. You could risk, let's say, an event killing off a leader with 
said ID. Like, for example, say if, say if two characters, including your new one, share the ID of a thousand. That means uh, if an event pop up pop up says kill that leader with an ID, and yes, that could exist as an effect. Uh, your character will also die too, or retire, depending on the effect. Now, field marshal, obviously, this is like you know different traits for that. Like for example, these are military traits, which uh, you could probably find in I think it was unit leaders. Uh, those are medals. Medals are a different thing. So yeah, you can find stuff here. Uh, these are all different stuff. Like uh, you know, you can do logistics. Uh, you could do like attack. Like these are different kinds of traits that go along with it. But um, I don't know why these are numbered. Now this is probably not a good place to look. But basically, depending on the traits that you have, and depending on where you put them, uh, those will be where they are. Now, you could, I want to say theoretically, because I've seen Paradox use this as a pass mechanic, you could put, like, let's say a subfolder of traits. I mean, you could try it, although I would always stick to the game format. To avoid bugs, if you will. So, um, yeah. Um, these are just stats, like, you know, how good their attack, defense, planning, logistics are. Again, uh, legacy ID, that is, well, the ID of the character. Same with here. Um, kill off that ID, you know, character with ID. For example, that character will take effect. It's almost like a bookmark, if you will. Um, but you don't really need this so long as you have a good setup. Uh, visible, not, means you cannot have these governments. Now, but since he's kind of Rexism anyway, that kind of it's an oxymoron. But you can change that. You could do neutrality, meaning that if, if the government is not fascist, this leader should not show up, or at least not be visible. But if it is fascist, then yeah, you should be fine. So it's a nice little mechanic to do. Also, this is kind of what I mentioned to you before about the visible and available. Now, when it's visible means that if the certain circumstances are true, it will appear. Because if not, it won't appear. Same kind of similarly with available. If the triggers aren't true, the character won't appear. Although available is slightly different. If you put available there instead, that would just mean that the government has to be like that. Although that's usually reserved for like if you have a certain idea or if you have a certain aspect of a uh, requirement, prerequisite, if you will. Visible is just will it appear or not. Available is if the triggers are true when it comes to that. Now, there's a lot of different brackets, like limits and stuff you can do. Um, I'm not going to go too deep into that, but basically how that works is that character will only be visible if the ruling country that he's a part of is fascist. Um, you could also do, like, when it says available, you could also put tag equals your country tag, which is EXA. For, for example, now, obviously, doing stuff like that, you know, it takes a lot of setup, but once you do set it up, after a little bit of trial and error, you should be fine. So, uh, I hope that covers the basics of leader creation, or character creation, at least, in this game. I know the lack of examples kind of are confusing. I might... I wouldn't mind trying to do another one that actually shows, but basically that is how it works. I've seen it many times. Uh, you have to make sure that the pathings are correct. You have to make sure triggers are true if you have any. You also, it, depending on what position that person is in, whether if he's a minister, a general, well, field commander or field marshal is up to you. But what is most important 
is the portraits. These portraits will show uh, how it works. But what else is important is the ID. Now the name, obviously, quotation, or you can just do this ID, but like I said, if you don't localize it, underscore will show. So uh, that's about it. Um, if you have any further questions, you may comment down below. I'll get back to you as soon as possible, and have a good day. Good luck with modding.